It's Thursday the 9th of November 2017, this is Andrew Greenfield for the Life in Quebec show and we're joined now by singer and author Marie-Lou Bourdin. And Marie-Lou, uh, thanks for talking to us. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're going to start off, we'll just talk about music just for a little bit. Now, you've been in the spotlight for, for years now, for about 15 or so years, ever since bursting onto the scene as, as, a, as a 12-year-old. Now, now, how did you cope with the fame of, of being a child star? Um, it's been, uh, you know, it's weird because when I think about my, my singing career, it's like, I feel like it's another life. Yeah. Uh, I was so young. I was 11 when, when it, it all started. And, um, when you're in it, you don't really realize how, how much space it takes. Um, I couldn't really go to school with my friends. I was a bit uh, isolated and, um, so it had a bigger impact than I thought, and it's just now that I realize um, that I really did not have a, a normal life. Um, and, and, and just to be clear, I was not Justin Bieber at all. It was really <laughs> small, but, but, but still, when you have attention like this when you're young, um, it really, it's, it's, it's special. And so I think it took a couple of years to really... Um, um, feel like I'm a normal person because I, I, I took time to recover from anorexia um, and because I, I think I, I had a, a, a problem with food because of that because I was always looking at myself uh, through pictures and, and, um, and videos and I started to, to not like myself so it took a, a, a lot of years to really feel like a normal person and now, now I, 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 I feel good now. Okay. <laughs> Now, um, just you, you, you said that it was your first career. You're now into your second career. Now, but your songs continue to get airplay on radio stations. and So, you know, you're in the car and you're listening to it and, and, and you, one of your songs comes on. And they've been listened to millions of times online. So your music is so well. You say you're not Justin Bieber, but, you know, your music is so well known. How do you react today when you hear one of your songs on the radio? Oh, my God. It's so, it's so weird because it, it really depends. Uh, how I feel at the moment. I, I three days ago I was not feeling very well, and, and one one of my songs started playing on the radio, and I, I became really angry. <laughs> I don't know why. And sometimes uh, it plays on. It, it really just makes me happy because it, it made who I am, you know. Yeah. And but but it was a um, it was a a part of my life where I was I, I did not have control on anything, even though I was. Really, I was surrounded by amazing people. I just really was searching for something. I, I didn't know who I was, so it really depends. Okay. So, or, 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 I, I'm, or I'm happy or not. It really depends. Okay. Now you mentioned that you work with some amazing people. Now I'm assuming some of those were big names, such as you know Rene Angelil, Celine Dion, Luc Plamondon. What What can you learn from being around people like that? Um. Well, what do you learn? I think you see uh, when you're 11, 15, 20, or 40, I guess, you, you can see the, the qualities in a person, you know, how, 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 how a person can be good. Yeah. You don't have to be mature to, to recognize that someone is a good person. And um, so I just, you know, I was just very lucky. But what I learned, I mean, I learned a lot of things, uh, but I was always with adults when I was a, a young girl, mm -hmm. so I guess I just learned earlier what people learn later, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so today then, you are a successful cookbook author with uh, best-selling three times a day and, the, and, you know, the second one three times a day too. Um, now, I'm assuming you're not a trained chef, and this is something completely different compared to a singing career, so how and why did that career change? <laughs> Did, how, how and why did that career change come about? Because it's quite... How and yeah, why? Yeah. Well, I don't even know myself. I, I, I really, 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 really love food. But at one point in my life, it became like my enemy because of anorexia. Yep. I thought that eating would 
changed my body and made me a big person. And I'm laughing now because I feel better, but it's not very funny. It was very, very intense. Yeah. And so I, the way I, I, I found to, to recover from that is to, to cook and to, you know, get closer to food and to understand the power that it has. You know, it, 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 it what makes us going, you know? And, um, and I think that I'm a creative person, so um, for, for me, music, writing a song or uh, creating a, re- a recipe is kind of the same. You know, you need not to really think about anything and, and try things. Yeah. And so I just really had fun in my kitchen. And um, with Alex, we, we just started taking the photos um, of the, the food. And because I had um, an issue with food, I really wanted to make it look good, you know, with Okay. Now, Al- Alex is is your husband, right? No more. But still, we work. We, we still work together. Right. Um. We, we when we when we uh, met each other, it's the first thing we, we did together is also bonjour three times a day. Yeah. And uh, it's still what really makes us close. Okay. And we really really love this project, and um, we have a lot of fun creating together. Again. Now, now your books are beautifully presented. Um, the the photographs are fabulous. They're they're wonderful. The recipes. Yeah, that's Alex. Now, the the recipes are easy to follow. Do you yeah. think this is why they've been so well received? Um, I think the fact that I'm not a chef makes me write the recipe the way a person doesn't cook. Yeah. Uh, understand? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because I talk to a lot of chefs and, and they tell me, I don't understand how you write down your recipes. It doesn't really make sense, but it makes a lot of sense for someone who is not a pro. Yeah, I th- <laughs> and, yeah. Um, and still today, uh, in the magazines, in the books, on the website, I'm the one writing the recipes the way I think. <laughs> right. I think that really, that, that's uh, what's special in Corpo Pancho. Well, I think that, that that is possibly what resonates with a lot of people because, you know, there aren't that many of us that are professional chefs and trained chefs, but we all need to eat, we all need to cook. So if we're yeah. being spoken to in in basic terms and basic language, look, this is how you do it, you exactly. know. Exactly, and yeah, and that you need, to, you need to be happy when you cook because, man, we cook every day, uh-huh. and uh, so I really feel like I have a, an impact on people because um, I help them uh, create because in a way yeah you're following a recipe but you can always uh, add an ingredient or you know be creative um, around the recipe and so I feel really good about this project because I have a real impact on families and, and, and people who um, live alone that don't really want to cook but because of the, the photos and everything they get inspired and they cook yeah now, um, you've mentioned anorexia a couple of times, and, and you, are, you do talk openly about it. Yeah. When did you first accept and realize you were suffering? And, and what did you do about it? Uh, for a long time, I thought that thinking about my weight and um, being scared about um, what my aunt would serve me on a dinner, or I thought it was normal, because people are always talking about their their body Uh and so the day I realized I was not um, I didn't have to live like this all my life I I was just so happy even though I knew that the fight was just starting I think the first step is to realize that you you, you're not it's not normal to be obsessed about what you eat or what you look like Mm -hmm. and um, so I started um, I started seeing someone to help me you know go through all of this and what I realized is that the problem was not food the problem was um, in my case that I did not have control I didn't feel like I had control on anything in my life so mm-hmm. I said well I'm gonna have control on my body it was um, it was really something deep yeah and I, I recovered by um, treating this it's not about food I don't know if it's clear because it's in English but no no I, I, I yeah I, I, I went through therapy do you think then that anorexia is it something that goes away, or will it be with you forever to some degree, and you'll have to manage it, or is it is it dealt with now? Do you think? Well, I think it depends because I hear a lot of girls saying that it never goes goes away. Mm-hmm. But in my case, I can tell you that I don't really think about this anymore. Right. 
Well, I, I don't think about it anymore. Um, I think about it because I, 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 I talk about anorexia to, to help people, but really, I think it's uh, since I had my, my daughter, yeah. uh, it's even more clear in my head that I don't really give uh, importance to um, my, my physical anymore. Right. And uh, I can say that I'm totally okay with anorexia right. now. So is that yeah. uh, is that like a coping me- mechanism then? Is that how you manage it? Um, well, you know, uh, for a long time I had like a transition where sometimes I would feel bad about eating a cake or something like that, and I would just talk to myself like I would talk to someone else, and it, it really yeah. helped me. And right, and and now at this point in my life, I don't have to to talk about uh, to talk to me anymore. But maybe yeah. it's gonna come back. I don't know when I'm, you know, feeling. Week or, or 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 I don't know how it, how my life is going. Yeah. But right now, I feel really good about you know myself. Now you have you have desserts in your book, so you can't feel bad about eating cakes. Oh my god, no! And I'm working on a, <laughs> uh, another book that is going to be dedicated to desserts, so <laughs> I don't feel bad at all. Good, about, good. About but how, on that though, uh, how important is it to eat well and eat the right things? Um, I think um, it, it's very important because the way you eat helps, helps everything. Mm-hmm. How you feel, your energy, and the more, you have, the more energy you have, the more, you're, the more happy you are, the more time you have to offer to your family and people you like and, and your work. So food is very important so I, I, I feel like I have a responsibility because I know that a lot of teenagers like Coco Pajol and, and um, even though I'm not perfect at all I know that I have this impact and that I need to promote this you know yeah. eating is very important eating good things and cooking is important well keep going with it seriously now uh, <laughs> you you are a proud Quebecer uh, how would you describe the people in the province compared to say the rest of Canada or other parts of the world um, I think uh, maybe I, I will sound a little um, um, idealist mm-hmm. that's fine <laughs> but, but I feel like we're all the same yeah the, the only thing that um, this I'm going to say that in French but la seule chose j'ai l'impression c'est nos, nos préjugés et notre conditionnement. Yep. Je pense que c'est vraiment la, la seule différence qu'on peut avoir, c'est celle qu'on nous impose. Je sens que fondamentalement, on veut les mêmes choses. On veut, on veut être rassemblé, on veut être aimé, on veut aimer. Dans yep. le fond, l'humain, il, yep. il est fait pour ça, il est pas fait pour se séparer. Donc, je, je, je vois aucune différence dans le fond, surtout d'un point de vue culinaire. Euh, je pense qu'on est tous les mêmes. Puis je pense que le jour où tout le monde va penser comme ça, yep. ça va aider. I, th- I think that, I think I think it's a beautiful response, actually. Now, I- if you could describe then Quebec in four words, what would those four words be? Curious, um, funny. Yeah. I think people from here are very funny. Mm-hmm. Um, they are uh, intelligent. Yeah. They 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 ask a lot of questions and they 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 are yeah intelligent. And I would say um, gourmand. Okay, so foodie. So yeah, okay. So uh, yeah. so you've got curious, funny, intelligent, foodie. There you go. That's that's good. That's a good fall. All right. Now yeah. uh, you mentioned earlier you've got another. You, you're working on another cookbook with desserts and things. Is that is that the the current project you're working on? Is that the next thing? Yes, it's the next. Yeah, it's going to come out um, next year. But uh, we're we're working on that in a couple months, and it's going to be amazing. I'm very proud of this project and. Of course, we have magazine going on, so it is, it never stops. I'm, I'm, I, well, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do, what you're going to come up with next, actually, because we, we love what you've already been doing. So, uh, we're looking forward to the desserts one because we're desserts fans in our house, definitely. Um, <laughs> uh, now, um, listen. Thank you very much for talking to us, and, and good luck with everything. 